Hello, YouTube. I'm the King of the South. And this is Unnecessary Roughness. And if you're watching this episode on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Stop. Like, subscribe, enjoy. 45% of you watch our episodes and are not subscribed. Why? Subscribe! subscribe. Thank you. I just realized something. There's five people in the room? No. Oh. We're not going to get a Drunk Casey episode this year. I know. No. And you know what? I I saw... What the fuck? I know. I saw a couple people commenting. I don't know if it was... I think it was might have been when we were on the stream. Yeah. It was like, boy, no Drunk Casey episode, sad face. And I was like, I hadn't even put that together. No, d Drunk Casey episodes are both the best and worst weeks of the year. Yes. I, here's it's a, god awful. Here's a silver lining. You know how low my tolerance is going to be whenever I can start drinking again? Which means... Yeah, that that'll be in, like, April. What? You can't drink, like, as soon as a baby comes out? Uh, isn't it breastfeeding? I would, I'd wait a little bit. I'd wait a little bit. You have to pump and dump. These are words I'm learning. I'd wait a little bit. Uh, well, I no, I, you, will not be, you will not be getting... Uh, the drunkest I've ever been was definitely when A&M played North Carolina in the Orange Bowl a few years ago. I don't remember finishing that podcast. That was... Insane, but we just had a. It's a, a great memory. Remember, we had a phantom hand just coming in Casey's apartment, just uh, <laughs> giving her drinks. You know what's sad? That wasn't my apartment, and boy, that hand does not like me anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> just laughing. We can laugh it off. We can laugh. You don't have to announce you're laughing, Jack. You can just no, laugh. no, no, no. <laughs> inside. You don't that, know. That, that, That's that, an insane. Uh, that that and I, female yeah. hand does not does not like me anymore. Um, I am sad about that as well. However, it just means that whenever I can. Yeah. It'll be the off season, and I think I I'll, I'll be able to have a you know what maybe I'll have my first glass of wine on the podcast. <sighs> you ready to do a show? As ready as I'll ever be. Hi, welcome to Unnecessary Roughness Barstool's College Football Podcast, brought to you by High Noon Hard Seltzer. Get yourself a tailgate pack, which has two black cherry, two pear, two cranberry, two grapefruit. Two of the newer flavors for High Noon, the pear and the cranberry, they're both flying off the shelves because they are delicious. Get that for your tailgate this year. Get the cooler. Get everything going. You can get the variety pack. You can get just get a four-pack of your favorite flavor. You can get Tall Boys. It's the best drink. And, and I feel like, uh, Casey, when we started with High Noon a couple years ago, they were, they were at one level. Now they're everywhere. Oh, my God. They're everywhere. They're oh everywhere. People, like, I feel like when we first – heard of high noon it was like i in the hamptons you could get it i remember yeah. fran telling me like she could drink it you know wherever she was and i was like i don't feel like this is a very popular drink and now if you even mention seltzers yeah. people are like oh high noon high noon yes yes Do they are one of the same yes in quarantine though when they yeah. were like sending like shipments to all our houses or apartments right and we, i mean like they would show up like we were having a party yeah those were the days what well, did do y'all know that I I think that they accidentally sent me the wrong shipment? I got I a pal I, I got a pallet in. I, I got four hundred high noons. <laughs> and you, you were not that. the one to have four hundred. When high no. I, and when I moved just uh, when I moved two months ago, put my stuff in storage. I had to throw away like twenty boxes of, of old of old high. Uh, they were two years they old. They were too old. And, oh. and they had been in my garage. Doesn't that stuff like not? No, oh, that no. that does. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've any hot. drink. I mean, any well, drink. Oh, except wine. Like except wine. I just like I just assume that anything that's in a can or anything that's like a. That might have been sealed. fine. I don't know. I'm sorry. Changes. I actually gave it away to somebody that could use it. I have, it I have the, a low standard. The temperature changes. Um, see, they sent me a pretty good amount, too. And I was living by myself at the time, so it was just me drinking them. And I, they sent me so much that I dr I was having to store them, like, under my couch. Like, I didn't yeah. even have room in my kitchen anymore. Uh, now, they're – I mean, I, I, I know I've said it on this podcast. Like, the trash room in my building – is always the recycling bin is always full of high noon and it's not coming from me i can promise just that. a bunch of basic bitches there well and you too you drink high noon that's true i love it i love it very much i just want to insult the people that you live with for some reason i just want to insult you i don't live with basic bitches um, no she lives in the like cool is no i know where she lives yeah she lives in a not really i've nice been inside building. her apartment heated I bathroom floor i do have that brandon have a cool I, I used her bathroom Bra he did do that brandon um said he was going to start an only fans of my apartment Mm -hmm. You haven't done that yet. I so. thought I would. Took pictures of, of, of everywhere. So that's where the magic happens. And then you got pregnant and ruined it. Well, the magic still happens. <gasps> oh, clearly right. did. All right. Relax. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. Relax. Pause. Okay. Pause. Um, we are headed to Iowa this weekend. The Barstool College Football Show. The first road show of the year. Dave Portnoy, Dan Katz, Brandon Walker, Casey Smith. Big Ev. You'll see a big Ev. You'll see a gigantic bus roll into Iowa City. Are you going to talk about the bus, or are you going to let also, it go? 
I, I don't I don't like the bus. I like I, no, no, I'm sorry. I love the bus. I don't want to be spoiled and say I don't no. like the bus. But can we just get a can, can we just get a uh, an updated picture of Brandon Walker for the bus? So I it's a three year old picture. It is. It's an old picture. Your hair is not what it is now. No. It's. I think those are the first photos we ever took together. Actually, those are they, the only photos we ever took together well, as far as a, a pro photo shoot. They still use the same photos of me, and I I my hair is different now. However, like you have made like an astronomical change. Right. So yeah. it is tough. However, the the overlay, the red and blue overlay helps, I think. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot. It is, but beautiful it is shot. it's cool to see. Um, from what I've been told, the location is awesome. 503 Melrose Avenue. A five minute walk from uh, the stadium to our uh, to our place. To I'm our also truck. an idiot, so they sent us like the travel booking stuff, you know, like the little right. whatever it's called. And the rendering show the stage, like how it's going to be without anything around it. It just looks like it's in an open field. Yeah. And my dumbass was like, "What is around the stadium? Just like a bunch of open field in Iowa? It's just corn, just corn fields well, everywhere." Turns out, it is. Well, I mean, it's Iowa City, but it turns out Iowa has a lot of open fields. Well, I, I, well, I love the people of Iowa. I love their scenery. Yeah. I love everything about Iowa. So I can't wait to be there. I can't you wait. You have to an be extra a, security guard. To be around, they, they, have, they have assigned me an extra security guard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm sure I won't need it. I mean, that's crazy. But uh, just in case, just in, who who knows? Um, but I'm gonna be on my best behavior. No, you're not. This sure is, ain't. This is actually. I mean, we'll get into the games, but this is an interesting game. It is. It is an interesting game. And there's. Listen, week one is week one. Week one has a lot of exciting layers because it's week one. It was great. Well, there's two elements here. You, I think you have a sneaky good schedule yeah. here. You obviously have Bama Texas, but then like there's. Usually there's three or four games that, that, that are like on that second level of interestingness that are really good, and I think you've got maybe nine or ten this week. Uh, I love – I just want on record that when I initially saw the graphics, I did say – Brandon's going to want an updated pick of him. Yeah. 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 I just want that on record. Um, that is correct. Uh, but I think this – I like this schedule this week, and I, uh, you're right. Iowa State, Iowa is – just has a lot of storylines. It has a lot of storylines. Iowa embarrassed itself in week one. There, there, and but one. There's, there's elements. To, or there's layers of college football. You can embarrass yourself and lose. You can embarrass yourself and win. And embarrassing yourself and winning is good. And it can be good. Iowa State's in a massive transition, but maybe the transition isn't a rebuilding. It's just a transition. Could be a transition. They got a new quarterback, but also uh, with everything, these two programs have been very good lately. Iowa State's probably had its best five year run maybe yes. ever, and they can't beat Iowa. I know that can't do it. They can't. Yeah, Brock Purdy. We're, we'll get to Iowa State, yeah. Iowa. We got yeah. a lot of games I know, I to get say, to. I, we have a lot of things to get to. I think that the most exciting thing about us, I mean, other than the fact that I think I don't want you to die, I yeah. would like that on record. Like I really don't want you to die, is that we're starting off the season in a place where, like, I I love when people are like, why are you guys just going to some random game? Like, the, yeah. this is stupid. Iowa has been like a known barstool destination for a long time. Like you go back to the show they did before we were even hired. It was nuts. I'm excited to see even with how much they hate you, just how big barstool's footprint in Iowa has gotten. We'll see. We will certainly see. And also see. Big Ten football because we, we, I don't care about Big Ten football, but we will. Too. You we care will. about all football. I care about all football, but I, I will see. And I have heard, and this is, I guess this is from actually Dave Portnoy, uh, he said that Iowa City is one of the better towns in the Big Ten. I've never been to Iowa City. I've so. never been there either. Uh, We're not, we, but when I heard that of Bloomington, I was like, Bloomington? That doesn't, I don't think that's all that great. And we went to Bloomington? Amazing town. Is that the place where we went and had that great dinner? Oh, We had a great dinner, but that's, that's also the place club? you tricked me into, into stopping and buying cigarettes. Oh, yeah. That was a great yep, story. Yep, R.I.P. Yeah, you oh, tricked. I said I needed tampons. Also R.I.P. Yeah, you said stop and get tampons. So I pulled over immediately, and you walked in and came out, and y'all were just smiling. You had, you had a pack of cigarettes. Uh, right it's before before we get into all the nitty gritty of week two news and whatnot, I was in here and Katie came in and said, "Did you oh. hear Tommy DeVito's in the office?" I was like, "Tommy he, DeVito?" I was like, "He has a game. <laughs> right. in, he has a game in like forty eight hours. Like, yeah. what, what what's he doing? They're playing here? Virginia." And I was like, "Why is he in New York City?" And then and he I was, was like, like, "The short guy." And then she was like, "Tommy DeVito, the short guy." I was from like, "Always Sunny." I was like, "Oh, oh Danny DeVito." Danny DeVito. Yeah, yeah just total forty and slope. I yeah. mean, that's. Katie is on her football shit. Yeah, no, That's no, how 100%, you know. Yeah. They my, sound similar. My interaction with – I mean, I didn't get to see him. I love him. I think he's fantastic. But Brandon came running around the corner, like, almost in tears, mouthing to me what I could not understand. And he was, like, freaking out. And I was like, what are you saying? And I got – you said it probably three or four times. And finally, you, I realized you were saying, Danny DeVito's here. 
Yeah. Pretty exciting. It is exciting. He's he's two rooms away from us right now, unless he's already gone. He's so but short. I will say this. As short as you think he is, he's shorter. Way shorter. He's shorter than that. I think it's he, it's pretty I, shocking. I think he's like, like he seemed short. Maybe it was just shocking, but he seemed shorter than Zod. He, he 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 seems short. He, he I, how how tall do you think he is? I think he's like four eight. Four ten. So four ten. And that means four eight. But yeah. I I feel like he's not he's no the, chance four ten. The so Justin Long was also in the office today, he and was. he was shockingly shorter than I thought he was because uh, yeah, he's five ten. And but in movies they if make that. I feel like yeah. they look he looks much taller. So it really is true. Like as short as you yeah. think, Danny DeVito. Justin is, Bieber was in the office this morning. No, I mean that's just not yes, true. Yes, I did hear that. That's just. And then MGK came. MGK by. and J- Justin Bieber were doing a duet here. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Brady too. Tom Brady. Then, Tom Brady flew in. You guys mean? Then MGK said, "Where's that? Where's that? Uh, Where's that hot blonde? Yeah, who's?" With the tit- with sweaty and then we were like, oh, sweaty she's titties. pregnant now. And she, he was like, oh. Where's you that, guys are really mean. Where's that dude with the sweaty titties? I mean, See, if, if Tom Brady is actually getting a divorce, you could slide Well, in. Brandon already told me it's ruined because I got pregnant. Yeah, you, you, you blew Some your guys, chance. So, there's a fetish for everything. Well, Tom Brady doesn't have it. How do you know? The man didn't jerk off all season. That can't be true either. Semen retention? <laughs> up Regardless. This, all right. All right. Football, mean, not football. Not football. Yeah, mean jokes. This was on you two. So, here. so Clemson has approved a new contract for Dabo Sweeney, 10 years, $115 million for $11.5 million average. He's back to second nationally behind Saban, the latest in the wave of coaching contract enhancements that started with Mel Tucker last fall. I mean, this makes sense. Listen, Dabo's the be- second best coach in the country. He should be the second highest paid in the country. I, I feel like that. And and like Saban, I feel like Dabo's probably a bargain for, for Clemson. Well, Clemson football wouldn't be anywhere near the stature they are today without Dabo Sweeney. So. <laughs> The storyline behind Clemson this year is very – first of all, how do you say it properly? I say Dabo Sweeney. Me no. too. Clemson. Or Clemson? Clemson. It's supposed to be It's supposed to be Clemson. Yes. No Z. We say it with the Z. Clemson. I say Clemson. It's Clemson. But then it's Clemson. I said Clemson on TikTok and people were – Clemson. Kept making, like, making fun of me. Clemson. Because you, it, you say it with like a Z sound? Say it, you're supposed to say it with an S. Clemson. 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 We all say it with a Z. Okay. Clemson. I think everybody does. Oh, is it yeah. a Clemson? Also, Clemson. fuck them. They're a cult. I don't also, care what they think. Uh, yeah, and it's cool. not even just that. Like, I'm sorry. You'd be a complete fucking asshole if you were like, so the Clemson game? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, come on. It's like Down to Notre Clemson, Dame. South Carolina. That's way different, Jack. Oh, anyways. Notre Dame. <laughs> how weird was it coming into this season? We had two separate people in here uh, talking about Clemson and <laughs> Clemson <laughs> and Dabo Sweeney about, like, oh, we have to see how he does this year. We didn't have to well, see Not really, no, no. No. Guy won two national titles. <laughs> guys in the four. playoff all the time. He won Be- 10 games Beat last Alabama year. to win both. Like, uh, his down year was 10-3. and three. Like, no, we don't. What, what, Dabo's proven himself. To be fair, it wasn't us that sounded like the biggest jerk-offs about him. It was Travi for the boys saying that he'd and rather have He was the Jerry. one that said it. He was the one that said, like, and we got to see about him this year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got to see about Dabo this year. Oh, yeah, we got, we, then we're like, we got to see this year. I was like, no, we don't. We pretty much know. Yeah. Now, he shouldn't do the gritty, but – Whatever, doesn't matter. He's the second best coach in the country. So ten back. more years of the. You think he'll cure no. cancer by the end of these ten years or not? Oh yeah. Yeah, but yeah. With probably that, by the end of the three years. Yeah, he'll his, move on to a new new disease. Yeah, with his. Big, all, he'll probably provide a bridge between uh, Clemson, Clemson and heaven. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Jesus uh, is going to come back. Jesus coming back to be his defense coordinator. He might be Jesus. I will. You can't rule it out. You can't rule it out. Um, this this Dabo graphic g- is funny to me because. It's like, I know that, and it's every time it happens in the NFL with a quarterback, it's like you have to set the market. But it is incredibly funny that we're talking about Nick Saban, Dabo Sweeney, and then it's like, oh, well, the enhancement that started with Mel Tucker. Don't, don't say that to Michigan State fans. I mean, it's like, which one doesn't belong? Did it start with Mel Tucker or Jimbo? Jimbo's another one. Well, well Jimbo, Jimbo has a national a title. Ago. Jimbo has a national yeah. title. And Jimbo's yeah. at, at and, and they had seven to hi- and a half million. They also that's wild. They also lower. had to hire Jimbo from like another big time school. Uh, you know, Michigan State just had to say, "Hey, Colorado coach, you want to come over here?" Yeah, okay. Yeah, they, they had contract, to. I mean, I Jimbo so. did win a national title, but also like the and that was only a few years ago. The difference between eleven and a half a year and seven and a half a year is a lot. We're still pretty good life if you're oh, making seven and a half. Definitely. Seven and a half. Ain't that, what you're, ain't that what you're making? Seven and a half? Yeah. Oh, I make more than that. Speaking of Florida oh. State, uh, I want to apologize Nobody on the last was? podcast. No, Jimbo Fisher. Okay. Uh, I said that Florida State and LSU were similar distances to New Orleans. That was blatantly wrong, so I apologize. How far? Don't apologize to those you. idiots for that. How well, far pe- are they? It's one's a, 300 miles, one's 50 miles. Yeah, I was wrong. 
I when Please, you said I, that, I, I thought like, it sounded I, weird, but I also can't do geography. I'd like shit. to say something. Tell me. Say something. One of the things we do wrong in college football when we talk about we talk about oh well they not going to have that many people at this game because they're this many miles from campus. Okay. UCLA fans love to do this when they say, oh, well, the stadium is 45 minutes from campus. Okay, I, that's fine. When you say New Orleans, that, that stadium is 60 miles from Baton Rouge, so not everybody came. Mm -hmm. The campus is where the school is. Mm. The, the, the campus is where the school buildings are mm. and the stadium is. The state is where the fans are. Mm. They're throughout the entire state. The city of New Orleans is 90% LSU fans. Yeah. You, they're not traveling from fucking – they're not all coming from Baton Rouge and they're all getting on a bus and saying, all right, well, let's go down to New Orleans. Yeah. The the school is in one location, like Mississippi State. The school is in Starkville. Most of the fans are in Jackson two hours away. The, like, there's no uh, – what was another one? Oh, App State, uh, North Carolina going to App State. There's more North Carolina fans where App State is than App State fans. There just yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's also – like the for you know for A and M like yeah if you go to A and M it's mm. in College Station the graduates from A and M are throughout are Texas throughout Dallas Houston yes. San Antonio like that it's not the only time I listen to that is if when they're talking about students because UConn so, correct UConn Stadium is forty five minutes from the campus and That's sometimes correct. the student body isn't well represented and that I will listen to that isn't the it the same with Miami campus. with Hard Rock. I think like yes, Hard Rock's 40 yeah. fans. Yeah, but again, away. South Florida has Miami fans. Like no. They're, yeah, they're, no, they're from, talking from about students. Students, students, yeah. students. Yeah, if your stadium is not on campus or like directly adjacent to campus, there is definitely a negative to not having the student population. But and also, graduates of schools are going to travel wherever they want. I mean, it's it's it is yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. However, I do think New Orleans is basically an LSU home game. Yeah, it, no, it's not. Basically, it is. Uh, all right, so uh, we had the unnecessary reference. Let me see, 77 responses. Good. So we'll have great, that towards the end of the year. Great gift the, choice, by the way. Yeah, thank you very much. An all-time mind pretzel for Matthew me. Matthew McConaughey was I here. He was here this morning. No, he wasn't. I love Matthew McConaughey. I can't. Matthew McConaughey, Justin Bieber, Machine Gun Kelly. Which one could I convince you was here this morning? McConaughey? Is he first? McConaughey would be first yeah. on that one. He could be uh, here. He's been on MGK Barstool. maybe. He's no. been on Barstool podcast. Yeah, no, uh, Machine Gun Kelly's by far the least famous of those three. Yeah. But Matthew McConaughey is also huge in sports, so I could see him. I mean, he's also an A-lister, so it'd be hard. I don't know. I would believe. I think I would believe Matthew McConaughey, which is crazy to say, because Machine Gun Kelly should be the number one answer. Bieber will never step foot anywhere near anything we do. He's way too famous. The Tamilios were here. I. Would no offense to TikTok whatsoever. I would not put like Taylor Swift and Bieber and that's fair. That's fair. Anywhere near the, the TikTok. We have a full weekend of college football, and this is a lock it in weekend. Whatever you did in week one, you have a chance to erase it. Whatever you did in week one, you have a chance to build on it. Whatever mm -hmm. you did in week one, you have a chance to forget it. Whatever you did in week one, you have a chance to make it your team the the rest of the season. I mean, everything is out there. You can look back in a couple of weeks and say, you know, week one we were bad and then we improved. Or you can look back and say, well, we hit the ground running. So we lock it in this weekend because if, if you do whatever you did twice, you just might be that. So I'm looking at teams like Louisville who goes to UCF and embarrass themselves at Syracuse. If they embarrass themselves at UCF, they're going to be a bad football team. But they have a chance to bounce back. Boston College kind of blew it against Rutgers. But now they have a chance to bounce back at, uh, at Virginia Tech. You have – Teams like Tennessee and Pitt, who both won in Week One, they're they're clashing. Like I, I kind of Friday night, Boise State's playing Air Force. Boise State has a chance. That's that's not that's not true at all. It's Colorado and Air Force. On Friday night, Colorado plays Air Force. On Who's Saturday Boise morning, Boise State playing on Friday Saturday night. Saturday afternoon. Uh, I don't know, but they're not. Sorry. Boise's Oklahoma State. Yeah. The, on Friday night? Oh, that was last week. I thought all in, Louisville, Louisville, UCF's the only Friday night game, isn't it? Boy, it's Boise, New Mexico, and Louisville at UCF. Okay, sorry, I apologize, uh, but that's a big game for you Boise State. You don't have State. to say you're sorry, Jack. Yes, he does. I'm just saying Boise State needs to like if they go in and only beat New Mexico by three don't, points. Don't 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 try to carry your point over to the next team. No, but they <laughs> were embar they embarrassed themselves last week. He was week. making a point about Boise State, not their opponent. Um, okay, fair enough. So uh, <laughs> we got – I don't know how y'all want to – let's just start with the biggest game. Yeah. Let's start with the biggest game, and then we'll go to the slate later. Syracuse at UConn. That's obviously Mississippi State and Arizona. A&M They are State. right back uh, 
Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Katie. Florida, Kentucky. Oh, Katie, God. pay attention. I know. I did that on purpose uh, to be right. the voice of reason. All right, fair enough. I love going to football games. <laughs> do you? I do love going to football games. I love you know going to football like? games too. Having good seats at football games. Well, it's important because if you're going to go to a football game, you don't want a shitty seat. Sometimes you don't. You're not able to get the seats three months in advance. Sometimes it's week off, and you're saying, "Hey, I got to go to the game Saturday night. Game time, the perfect app for you." The v- they make it so easy to get last minute tickets, not just to football games, to concerts, right. to anything that you want to go to. Obviously, we care the most about football games, but game time can get it to you like literally right before kickoff. I went to the Yankees game a couple of weeks ago, Yankees mm-hmm. and Mariners. I told them on Tuesday morning, hey, I'd like to go. Uh, now, I was able to tell them, but if I just went on the game time app and say, hey, this is what I want, I find it easy. It's done in, in minutes, and the, the prices are very, very good. I mean, in fact, the they Yankees guarantee game, you the lowest price. The lowest price. Great prices on the day of the game. It's fantastic for late tickets. I'd love to go to Alabama, Texas this weekend. We could just pick up and go right now. We could fly. Well, we have to go to Iowa, Iowa State. But if you're going to be at that game and you're going to come to the show and you don't have tickets, definitely go to the Game Time app. Create a login. So you go to the account tab. You create that login and redeem code Rough. Rough. R O U G H. Rough. Rough. Ew, I don't like the way we did that. That was rough. Rough, rough for twenty per. Wait, twenty dollars off your first, first purchase. purchase. The terms do apply. So again, that's twenty dollars off your first purchase. Redeem code rough. Download game time. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Guaranteed. Uh, we've got uh, Alabama, Texas. A clash of two of the top five brands in college football. A clash of a former Saban assistant who rectified his career in Tuscaloosa under Saban and Saban's best team. That's the clash we have now. Um, me and Jack have joked all all summer. We haven't joked. We've been correct. Jokes. Texas is yes. back. It's a joke. Texas is very back. They we might ours. suspend that for this week. I mean, uh, listen. That's such a cop out. No, it's not. Hey, 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 hey. Such a cop out. Was it out. March? Was it March or April? I'm like, hey, they're gonna get killed by Alabama week two, and they might not lose again. No, did I say that? I, you you did. did say that, but where I say it's a cop out is that, and again, Texas fans did come to my defense when I brought this up. To say Texas is back does not include getting killed by any team. It might. They can lose. It might. I, but I, I'm saying that if, if you ask a Texas fan what makes Texas back, it would be winning a national title, being in the college football playoff consideration, and I, not getting killed. I don't think back is a national title for Texas. They hadn't won that fucking many. What, they uh, won I'm three? With, I'm with Casey here. They what like Texas is back is being All I'm saying is they can, they can be the back before team. they win a national title. Our point's still going to be right, but I agree with what she's saying. Texas fans are not going to be like, oh, they won eight games, we're back. No, they eight. Not. They got to win ten. But I think that Ten if, is back, if no matter you, what happens this Saturday. Like, the way that they played against LSU in yeah. 2019, if they played against Alabama like that, then and they end up winning ten games, fine. I don't – I can – I would gamble on any team being, quote, back does not include getting killed by another power five. Well, I don't think they're going to – I don't know that they're going to get killed. But you said if they are, they can still be back. Texas should have beat LSU in 2019. All they got to do is win ten games to be back. That's easy. Um, but here's the thing about this game. Everybody just assumes when they see the name Alabama that Alabama kills everybody. Well, that's not actually true. Last year they beat a bad Auburn team by two points. Last year they beat a bad Florida team by two points. Last year they lost to uh, a decent Texas A&M team. Last year they beat a good Arkansas team by six points. Like This is not a team that blows everybody out. So if you go on the road and you have a puncher's chance, you have Quinn Ewers. It, hopefully he develops into what we think he's going to be, me and Jack. And you have Xavier uh, Worthy I and you have John Robinson. Good. You, could, you could score 14, 21, 28 points on this team. I feel like Texas has everything they need to not get embarrassed. Offensively, yes. Defensively is the question for me. Because when you look – I know we talked about Utah State and Utah State – fine they still won the mountain west last year they're not some terrible team alabama's offense not only looked the way that it did last year now you add the dynamic and i don't know if if bryce young will do this this week or not i assume there'll be some of it him leading the team and rushing that's not something we saw in his heisman trophy year the thing with texas is their offense is there definitely the names and i think quinn ewers is going to be good too and then you've got xavier worthy and b john robinson but can their defense slow down that offense I don't know if I'm willing to say it's going to be anywhere near a close game. If, because it, if, if Alabama comes out and punches them in the face right away, it doesn't, it's not going to matter how good their offense is. So in the long run. Here's, here's a question for you. You, you. you caught this on your Twitter, right? So 
there's what you think might happen with your head. But inside Casey Smith's heart as a Texas hater, but also kind of a low-key Alabama hater because of the the – the recruiting class you guys had, the the battle between Jimbo and Saban that Jimbo bowed out of. You didn't bow out of it. Uh, where's not. Where's your heart uh, with it? What, what What if your heart could create the best scenario of what's ha- what happens with Alabama Texas? Where is it? It's such a hard question. When I was growing up, every time Oklahoma and Texas would play, my dad always said, "I wish they could both lose," mm-hmm. and that was just the best way to put it because you can't have that. I wish both of these teams could lose. This is where the pettiness truly comes in. This is where college football fandom makes no sense, and it's just passion-driven, right? A&M plays right now Alabama every single year. They are in the same division. Alabama is king. When A&M beats Alabama once every, you know, every once in a while, it's great. I still would rather Alabama win. Not because I – No, lo- I'm not worried about who you would want win. Do you want them to kill them? Yes, because – Alabama's been winning national titles recently. Alabama is Nick Saban. Alabama is king. If AM loses to Alabama every year, it's like, all right, you know, it is Nick Saban. If Texas beats Alabama and AM loses to Alabama, all hell breaks loose. Let me answer. So my pettiness wants Texas to lose because then it's like, this is what you have to deal with in the SEC. Welcome to having to play the best team every single year. Let me year. tell you what your heart's answer should be. I want them both to lose. Your heart's answer should be this. <laughs> the second best thing in college football to your team winning a big game is your rival getting their ass embarrassed. Yes. No, no, that that's no. don't 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 do a caveat. You just drew on me. Don't I do a caveat. You know why I can do a caveat right now? The second best thing in college football to your team winning a big game is your rival getting embarrassed. Yes. When you're playing every year, That's I don't think difference. that matters. It that, does no, matter. no, it doesn't matter because why? Y'all still hate them, and you still want them to get embarrassed. Yes, but I also want to beat Alabama too. I also right you now you deal with Alabama later. That's true. You deal with Alabama later. That's a I, different thing. I, from a like a, a rational, level-headed standpoint, you would say, okay, I would rather the team that I have to compete with for a conference title, for even a division yeah, title, you would want them to lose? Nothing they do this weekend affects you. Nothing. Nothing Alabama does affects you. Nothing. And Texas fans, because they haven't been there in a while, like you said, being in the national conversation, have been there in a while, if for some reason Texas was to beat Alabama, it will be insufferable. And I know everybody's Twitter feeds are catered to them. Can you imagine what my Twitter feed would look like? This is about me here. you You need to realize something real quick. They don't have to beat them this Saturday to be insufferable. If they cover the spread, they're going to be insufferable come come Sunday. If they lose this game by ten points, they're going to be insufferable. I don't think so. I oh. think they'll be insufferable. I don't, but not towards me specifically. Now you know what would happen if they cover the spread and then come October eighth, A and M doesn't. Then insufferable. It's all about the who beats who by how much. Alabama. Y'all have you haven't been close. Y'all haven't been playing. You're right. not you're not close enough to the rivalry right now. You need to get in tune with your hate. Correct. Your hate ain't 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 tuned up right now. What I really want, and this is and I made this mistake last year when Arkansas beat Texas, and I was I like to be able to talk shit and be like, well, this is what it's gonna hap- happen. Now, in like the SEC. It's like a preseason game for you for this game. Do what? Uh, it's like a preseason game. Arkansas played Texas. You hate Arkansas, but not as much as you hate Bama. So I hate Arkansas like fans pre-season. more than Bama. Arkansas doesn't threaten me like Alabama does. Now they did they beat us last year. Yeah. But from a, a standpoint Arkansas of Arkansas fans are gonna love that. Yeah, no, it's a, they they just don't. I mean, it's a fact. I had somebody I'd say like, "You're mad that we're rubbing elbows with the big boys." Like, take them a month to mentally one, process it. One year you rubbed elbows in the last ten years. Like, get the fuck out of here. I want Alabama to go in there and shut up this whole scenario of what's going to be easy for Texas and Oklahoma to come into the SEC because you, we used to beat A and M over a decade ago all who, the time. Who the fuck is saying that? And 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 it's, it's not, they're idiots anyway. It's not about the whole conference. It's about well, little we beat up little brother all the time. It's like okay. hey, that's been over a decade ago. Welcome to playing Alabama every single year. So my heart says I want Texas to lose. I wish Alabama could lose too. My head says Alabama is going to cover the spread. I just think they're going to. That's not because I hate Texas. I think that they're a much better team. I will be miserable if Texas wins this game. Just I think, flat out miserable. I think Texas keeps this game closer than most people. Um, you think they cover? Yeah, I do. I, I, I think they lose this game like 45-28, 38-21. 
between 14 and 17 points, somewhere in there. It's like I feel, 20 and a half right now. I feel, I feel like they're they're in the game in the third quarter, and then Alabama just kind of puts the foot on the gas, leaves a little bit, but I don't think they get to the cover and number. I think it depends on, and it goes back to what we were saying about Alabama's offense. If it stays close, like you're saying, then I could see a scenario like that happening. If Alabama comes out and says, like, say they score on, like, three of their first four possessions or something along those lines or series – then I think it, it ends up blowing the doors off of it you, much you, quicker. you got to understand, this is a perfect uh, teaching scenario. It's a perfect scenario for Steve Sarkeesian. He's in year two. He had to root out the culture in year one. He's got a young quarterback. He's got good offensive players. But what he's been preaching uh, since he got there is, is how to be like Alabama, how to be like Alabama, how to be like Alabama. Now he gets. To, they're going to stay on the field. They're going to get on the field with him, and regardless of what happens, he's going to be able to tell these players, all right, boys, that's Alabama. That's where we're going. That's where we got to go. That's what we got to do to be. Now, if they beat them by 90, going to be harder to inspire like that. But this is a huge opportunity for Sarkeesian, playing a uh, coach that gave him a second chance at life. Gigantic. Also, we're talking about their offense. When you talk about quarterback and skill players, they have them. I know that they won last week easily. Their offensive line was not that good last year. In fact, it struggled pretty heavily. Who, Texas? Texas. Oh, it was garbage. So, you know, now like now I'm even talking myself even more into, again, not just because I hate Texas, but like Alabama's defensive front against an offensive line that's a little bit leaky at all if they look like last year. It's very it, young, too. It, I think it could potentially be disastrous. Will it? I don't know. I hope not. Much has Until been the made. the game, then I hope so. Much has been made about Saban against former assistants, but this one's interesting to me. Like, this is just a former assistant. Nick Saban rescued this guy. Yeah. Like, he, 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 he revitalized his career. Like, yeah. Sarkeesian was having a hard time – you Same know, with Kiffin. Getting he's, back, yeah. Just, he's 1A, 1B with Kiffin. Yeah, they both got rescued by this guy, and, and Saban now faces him. Uh, it's a fascinating game. I do think Alabama wins it. I think Alabama wins it relatively comfortably, and but I, I think the number's too big. Sark won the Natty in 2020 with them. Mm -hmm. He was the offensive coordinator in 2017 when they lost to Clemson. Was he there four years? No, he no, left he and left then came, and came back. back. Remember, he went mm -hmm. to the Falcons to be the OC. Ah, oh, yes. Could you pull up his? Uh, he left. He left and then came back after Kiffin was gone. Yes. Yeah. But Kiffin had been gone. Kiffin. Well, Kiffin was gone the first time. Yeah, Kiffin was gone. The it first was. Time. Uh, what year did Kiffin leave? Uh, like fifteen. He went to FIU. FIU. That was in fifteen. Fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. So. 2016. Okay, all right, I see. So, in 2016, he was the analyst interim OC for Alabama. He called the plays in the Natty. He used that to get the Atlanta Falcons OC job, came back to Alabama in 19 and 20, which was to his last year in the Mac Jones year. Who was in between? There was somebody else that Ryan was – Ryan Dayball. That's yeah. right. And now they yeah. got uh, still Bill O'Brien, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so I got it feels – yeah, that's insane. The Remember, been gone Kiffin that long. didn't get to play a call of the plays mm -hmm. in the national championship, and I think the college football semifinals, I th and that was when there was a lot of rumors behind does Lane hate or does Nick Saban hate Lane, and then there was a lot of message board rumors about it. As and a, what as year well. was that? Was that 2016? 20 yeah, it was 20. Okay, yes. And then I think Lane went 2017 right. to Let's FAU. Let's move on from this game. But uh, I want I want to hear what Jack and Katie are going to pick too. Yeah, no, I think the podcast, Texas. The podcast has I think to have Texas a keeps it relatively close. I think I I'm not there yet, but I probably by the time it kicks off, I think I will give Texas a much bigger chance than anybody That's on this podcast panel. But that being said, the trenches really scare me. It's gonna be a beautiful game. It's gonna be the burn yeah, and I actually don't mind there. that it's at noon. To be honest, I don't either. I wanted to we'll hate be it, up but and we'll be ready to go. Oh, what, we won't. Well, you guys, no, we won't be able to watch it. Well, no, we will, because guess the the company we're flying with this year has internet. Ooh. Ooh. Bougie. Yeah, but we'll be on the ground by the time the game starts. It will just be on the bus. We'll watch it on the bus, oh, and then we'll do what, what, we'll the shows. The, the shows in the second half. You're, you're right. Yeah, we'll be on the ground. Katie. Now. Katie. Um. So back to the offensive line. I pulled up the depth chart. Well, there's only one senior. Everyone else's sophomores are freshmen. Mm. Going up at Alabama defensive line. Hmm. I, I, I'm just gonna stick with the over. Like I know the Alabama. What's I, the total right now? Sixty-five. I, I just, I, I just want to. Uh, yeah. Okay. What? I like. I feel. Uh, also, we have a very good shot of all just two minutes in looking at each other. Be like, why did we pick Alabama? That was the easiest pick in the world. Maybe. 
We'll see. I hope maybe. so. I, you know what? Jack talks about how by the time it kicks off, he's going to maybe give Texas more credit. By the time it kicks off, I will be way more staunchly on the I hope Alabama kicks the ever-living shit out of them. I do hope Texas where you does be. well, though. You should I be am there already. Way. I am that way. Okay. I want but Texas to do well. Because whenever Alabama better. plays Ole Miss, even if it would benefit me for Ole Miss to beat them, I, I want Alabama to win by 100. 100%. But you, because Texas and A and M haven't played in ten years, I it, don't get that. Why that matters? I don't. I really don't get that. Why that matters? Uh, it doesn't change the hate. No, I still hate them. But the it only does. thing is, you hit, you don't know, like because you play all the time. Like it's almost like trying to describe an experience that you didn't have. Like you just don't know. I don't know either. But like I think Casey, they haven't. It's weird. It's it's like, like how do you even uh, describe it? Right. But you're at the end of the day, a hundred percent. You never want. Texas to have anything to hold over AM's head, which means they need to lose by 100 to Alabama. Uh oh, I don't like this. I don't like that we got snarky, bitchy Nick Saban of already. Of course you Nick do. Saban on the difficulty of playing Texas with former OC Steve Sarkeesian as the head coach. We played several teams who know us, but you act like we don't know them. All right. He's already being a dick. That's I don't I don't I don't like Dick Saban. That, that that scares me. He also loves this team. He I'm keeps sure talking about family, how much yeah. No, but no, he, I guess, but this is Bama fans every year, but we would have to ask Travi, but I think Nick Saban talks about this team like this he a, really likes it. Last year, he yeah. did not like his and team. And they were rebuilding last year. They played in the national title. And remember uh, how he, he grabbed Will and Bryce yeah. and was like, these two men right here. Yeah, these guys. Yeah, no, he. I, I don't think – I understand that he and Sark have, like, a, an interesting relationship. But at the end of the day, Nick Saban wants to prove everybody, like, oh, you know, your assistants, they know you. Like, no, they fucking don't. If we talk any more about Alabama, Texas, I'm going to hang myself with this microphone please wire. Don't, please don't do that. I just uh, – okay. Brandon, a lot of times when we're on this podcast, you yep. know, we're drinking iced coffees. You might have a high noon. No, we're never drinking iced coffees. I, I've never had an iced coffee in my life. Okay, well, I'm drinking – Okay. Iced coffees. You might be drinking a high noon, but you know what we're all drinking at this table right now? I'm constantly drinking body armor. Body armor water. Yes. It's very important to drink water. Body armor is the so important. hydration, hydration, hydration. They yeah. can't stress it enough. Official hydrator of Barstool Sports. Not only do they have the water though, they have very important hydrating more than a sports drink. It's not just I yeah. was gonna say sports drink, but it's more they than they got that. great flavors and everything. They got fantastic drinks, but I just I love the water. I love the, the water, water so too. good. It's more than a sports drink. It is the choice for hardworking hydration. It has potassium packed electrolytes, antioxidants, B vitamins, plus no artificial sweeteners, flavors, and dyes. And that's important because you don't want all the sugary, salty yeah. stuff. Whenever you're trying to rehydrate, you want everything that's in your body. And most importantly, it tastes good. It tastes good. It and tastes your, good. your favorite athletes out there this season, they're hydrating with Body Armor Sports Drink. It's available for purchase in stores and on Amazon right now. Go get you some body armor. Just like us. Uh, we have, we have, can I, listen. You got it. I got you. I, I know, love that I that's, I love that you have that TV graphic up. Going. That's the most confusing fucking okay. thing to look at in the world. All right, you want me to tell you what I think the next most important game is? <laughs> Please. Uh, I know what it is. It's, Kentucky, it, Florida? Yeah, yeah. easy. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, no, go. no, I'm sorry. That's the most important game. I'm actually with you. That game's more important than Alabama Texas. Alabama Texas is just like a showpiece. Yeah, but it's, it's just a, that's the most hyped game. It's the most hyped game. Yeah, it's yeah. the biggest game because it's two big brands. But that game doesn't won't really matter in the in the long run unless Texas wins. It's unless Texas sold wins. Out. But that yeah. game's not going to matter. Even if Bama loses, I don't think it matters. That no, much. that'll be fine if they run the table in the SEC. It'll nothing, matter to me, no, Jack. Nothing that really happens Saturday in Alabama Texas is going to matter other than for brand building for for everything like that. Kentucky that Florida lines. fucking matters. Mm -hmm. Like. Last week we had all these games, but the game that mattered the most was Penn State and Purdue in the in the Big Ten. One of them was going to be behind the eight ball, and one of them was going to be you know in the mix for their division. Penn State ends up winning it. Purdue uh, loses a chance to get a leg up on on Nebraska early and other teams early. So this one is is the big one. Florida coming off their biggest win in five years, ten years, and they're come, they're at home again and they're playing a Kentucky team who is ranked number twenty. Florida's number twelve now. Florida has to go back to back gigantic, emotional, huge efforts at home against probably a team who's m built more to beat them than than Utah was. Like this is an SEC team built with SEC athletes who's been here before. Utah had to come across the country in the humidity. The humidity ain't gonna bother Kentucky. No, they don't. No, they don't nothing that, that happens in the swamp's gonna bother Kentucky. And I, I, I don't know, man. I it smells to me. 
Oh, this is a great spot for Kentucky. Yes. Kentucky 100%. did not look good versus Miami. They, but they, here's they the won thing. by like 21. That's fine. They didn't need to. No, agreed. nobody that didn't look good in week one. It doesn't matter for week two. It just doesn't. And like it, it feels like it does. Also, I think in those lower tier games, we have to remember coaches don't want to put a lot on film. Like they do enough to beat Miami Ohio, which they did. They won by what twenty four. The cover. That's all I know. And and so twenty four. And so I could see. And then also, uh, this is just classic. Now it. I don't know if it's going to change with Napier, but Florida, it looks like they're turning it around. And then someone comes like Kentucky, and it's like, nope, you're still yeah. who, you, who you are. Well, they're still wearing the matching socks. So no, I, I get it's full. <laughs> and I think it was um, Dan. Culture's changed all Big of a Cat said this. He was like, oh, they had their huge win. They're going to be out partying. They're going to have a hangover. I actually think because of Billy Napier with the socks, they're going to be disciplined. Like, they're going to be turned <laughs> around. That's I love awesome. We got to stop saying no, socks, no, We got to stop her. saying socks. No, that's no, unreal no, from no, no, Katie. No, no. We have no, to stop unreal. saying socks. No, no, no. We don't. You know why? Because, like, a credit to me for, for being wrong and admitting I was wrong. I hated the socks so much. Now that they've won, if you don't think that I'm going to flip that on the other side, be like, wait a minute, Florida fans. You guys love the socks thing. The culture's completely changed. I, I feel like sometimes we put too much into, all joking aside, too much into, like, they're going to – they have a hangover, you know, metaphorically or whatever from, like, a big game. Like, they're still playing at home. Yeah. It's still a division game that's really important. Like, I, I feel like a lot of times it's like, well, they had this huge emotional win and Kentucky only played Miami of Ohio. Like, they're not going to be, you know, as hungover. I don't think that necessarily always is true. Well, I think there's a momentum also, thing you, you, going into this. Four, four to one the game. It was back and forth. Utah moved the ball yeah. all night. Yeah. Kentucky's got a quarterback who, you know, I, I, I don't love him, but a lot of people think he's just as good as Cam Rising. So we'll see about that. He's got a chance here to make a big statement in his career. He also this has is a huge cha- for his. Yeah, this is big. I, I don't know. The four and a half point spread is wild to me. I, I think is this it four is. Four and a half? I think somebody's winning this game by a field goal. I, I think I Florida's about to be in I'll another. Be all over Kentucky. I think Florida is in another uh, situation where it's going to be a a one-score game at the end, and it's going to be very, very tight. I I, I love this game. I really like Florida as a team and for the future. But that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if the the team on the field on Saturday night, I wouldn't be surprised if Kentucky has a better football team. Now, there's a lot of factors in there. Anthony Richardson may just take over. Coming into the season, everybody thought Kentucky was better than Florida. Yeah, but – the line is suggesting that it's they're not. Is it down to four and a half? I, I it think it's been at four and a half for a oh, couple I, days. I looked at the sports book today. It was six. All right. Well. Uh, I mean, I, I'm just curious. I This game, you're right. It is the most important game, especially because, you know, in Tennessee, playing Pitt is also a big game, but not in the SEC. I will be interested to see this quote. <laughs> I hate when that happens. What happened? I'm trying no, to don't. look up the sports book it's and it wants me to update. No, I'm on the back end. It's, it got pulled from our book. Something, some news might be coming. What? It got pulled? Yeah. When well, news let's not say that on the podcast. If it, if it goes right back up, it won't matter. Okay. No, I'm just saying. It, it just. Um, when Sam Hartman news came out, it did. I, if this quote culture change, and I, again, I won't, I won't use the word you don't want me to use. I won't talk about a piece of clothing or a pair of anything that people wear under their shoes if the culture really has changed this much under billy napier which it may have i don't know we'll see like this game to me i'm not gonna look at and be like wow they were hung over from utah i'm not going to however we'll see like will levis this is a huge like we said it's a huge game for him we'll see also how good utah actually is i think I don't like playing college football math like that, I know, where but it's, it's hard like not this team to. beat that team and that team beat it's this team. It's hard not team. to, though. Also, Katie, it, it's absolutely on the book, and in, and she's right. It is six right now. Florida minus six. Um, oh, you had to update it too. Yeah, I had to update I did it. Too. I yeah. had to update it. So Florida minus six right now, which makes me love Kentucky so much more. I like Kentucky a lot in this game. I do to win? too. Oh, I don't know about to win, but I to think cover. plus six is way too inflated off of a. And this is a new team, new big win, and. Bama, we don't think about after having a big win. No. But this is a new culture, and it's going to be tough, even with the Sox. In my defense, I realize I didn't scroll all the way down. That's all right. Um, <clears throat> I think this could be the game of the weekend. I, I think this is going to be an incredible SEC game. It's going to be an incredible uh, – it's so important going forward for these two teams because the the number two spot in the SEC East is wide open. Florida has a big game at Tennessee a couple of weeks. If they go 0-2 against Tennessee, Kentucky – 
And they're not competing in the East this year. And, so. And we talk about how big of a game this is for Will Levis. I mean, Anthony Richardson, while I, you know, only after week one, but let's overreact. He was our player of the week last week. He was being talked about a bunch. Like he, I don't think by the end of the year, we're going to be saying he should be in the Heisman race. But as of right now, he's up there. I have a question. I, I hmm, Good. You probably just saved me from saying something that was going to get me, get people mad at me. Okay. Say it. Don't be a pussy. Here's a, this is a prediction, but what do you think the biggest overreaction of the week one will be in week 12? Anthony it very, it, may, it very well could be Florida. Yes, yeah. I mean, they jumped from unranked to 12. Yeah. It, it very well could be Florida. Um, but what are we supposed to do? It's a rite of passage. It no, could be. It could be Georgia. We're for people, about- for people that don't have to come in here and work every day and get to to get to do their own schedule to say, oh, just tell me you're overreacting without. Yeah, we're fucking doing a goddamn podcast every week where we got to react. Sorry, that just rubbed that, me the wrong way. Was that what you wanted to say, but you weren't going to say? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. No, I mean, not that I have any personal problems with anybody who said that. I'm just, fuck. I mean, what do you want us to do? We have to overreact, and one of those... We don't have to overreact, but we have to react, and I, I don't well, think we were overreacting. You have to react to what we were given on the field, and part of that could be overreacting. Jack is 100% right. I mean, saying that the state of Florida had a good-ass weekend was not an overreaction. And no. to say that Anthony Richardson played his fucking ass off is not an also, overreaction. Small brain move by a lot of people who were saying that's an overreaction. You weren't just saying just the weekend. That's been the whole month off season think about miami yeah. miami's been revitalized with crystal ball and they were like oh they'd be but through cooking yeah but you were talking about miami for yes. the entire yeah. season coming yeah. up which if you're denying that 70 iq yeah i love when jack pulls out the iq and so yeah, it's so good the, IQ. the anthony richardson train will either catch a lot more steam yeah. this upcoming weekend or slow down magnificently there to me there's no middle ground with him this weekend yeah it, it could get replaced by will levis if he has a huge game if he goes 300 yeah. and three touchdowns you know, he, sudden, he starts to change the, he starts to back up the narrative that got changed about him can you show me kentucky's upcoming schedule after this game oh uh i almost told you if, if if you hadn't said it out loud, I was going to tell you what Kentucky's upcoming schedule was. Uh, Youngstown State, Northern Illinois, and then at Ole Miss. Oh, man. they If they win this game, they could really go into your game. 7-0, oh. 6-0? Yeah. And that would be a massive game. Yeah. I think they Ole Miss would probably Tennessee catch them. the end of – Ole Miss yeah, could catch them, yeah. yeah. It's at Ole Miss, yeah. Yeah, I think Ole Miss That would be a good game. Um, Looking at Kentucky, if they beat Florida, and, I, and they obviously have ranked teams on the schedule, and I think Mississippi State will be ranked by the time they play – Maybe it's just because looking at the East is so much easier to look at. They just don't look like they have that hard of a schedule to me. Well, that's why they've gone like nine and three. Right. Yeah, they have. Like, they have like taken advantage of a down East and a bad non-conference yeah, schedule. Like it's just. But like, that's what you have to do when you're. Definitely, no. I'm not talking shit. Yeah, like, I know, I know. But like looking at it, I'm like, that's their schedule. And we also say it's not a hard schedule when teams like Florida and Tennessee are down. Like we, we right. Yeah, and they're so. playing at Ole Miss, at Tennessee, at Georgia. Yeah, not at Florida. Not that's, easy. that's a tough schedule. Not easy. But I know um, what you're saying. It's easy to just look at it and say that, but if the SEC East is competitive again outside of Georgia, then yeah. Okay, let's do hard. it by the uh let's do it by the window now. Let's do it by let's go ahead and take a look at your your early window on Saturday for the weekly schedule. Thank you very much. We start of course with Alabama, Texas. That's your noon game. But the, the other noon standout, South Carolina or Arkansas is is certainly something too. I I I like South Carolina in a little bit of a bounce back spot to keep this close. Arkansas probably wins the football game, but anybody saying, you know, Rattler didn't look good against Georgia State, they didn't look good against Georgia State. Georgia State not a bad football team. Now Georgia State might beat North Carolina this week. Like that's that's legit. Like I don't think Georgia State's bad at all. South Carolina goes on the road to an Arkansas team who gets two two opponents at home. I, I think Arkansas wins, but I think it's a sl- I think it's a sluggish affair, like a, a, a 17-10, 24-17, something like that. Going back to Tuesday's episode. when you know, it like w- sluggish affair? Arizona might be Mississippi State. Well, no, I really yeah. like Ger- Georgia State this weekend. Well, yeah, but that's just not true, Katie. You can't just say it back. Also, North Carolina. You can't Car- just say it I back. Really say Mississippi State didn't spite. allow 61 points to App State. It's true. Beat the uh, shit out of Memphis. Well, so let's and you're right. Arizona could beat Mississippi State. State. But I'm using but it to, to talk about the South Carolina game. Georgia State's not a bad football team. Yeah, no, agreed. I'm, I'm just making spite. On Tuesday's episode, we talked about the, you know, if you're forgetting, forgiving, whatever that game we played was. Spencer Rattler, because of the way that he played, it was like how like how much credence do we give that? 
Arkansas, on the other hand, because, I mean, and, and they didn't play fantastically against Cincinnati, but they did enough to win, and it was a ranked win. I feel like that might meet somewhere in the middle. Do I think Arkansas is going to lose? No, but I don't think Spencer Rattler is going to look near as bad as we saw last week, and I don't think Arkansas is going to come out and just, like, absolutely kill this team. Either of those things could happen, but I think I just I can't let go of Spencer Rattler yet. Like I can't say he's a bad quarterback. I can't say he's fucked. Like to me, let's put away week one. Arkansas will win. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. So the other standouts here in, in the early schedule, uh, sneaky ones like Mizzou at Kansas State. Everybody just assumes Kansas State is pretty good this year. They have a, a borderline Heisman candidate, and Deuce Vaughn. They have the new quarterback. They have a good defense. They were a sexy pick for a lot of people. Mizzou is a team that's just kind of sliding under the radar, but they've been recruiting at a higher level than they're used to. They might not be as bad as people think. Mizzou at Kansas State is one is one to watch is all I'm saying. It's one to keep your eyes on, on in the early window. And Missouri and Kansas State don't absolutely hate each other like other air teams in that area. I mean, they don't like each other, though. I there's mean, definitely that, a there's contention. Defin- yeah, definitely contention there. I don't there. think Missouri wants to go into that state. Wake yeah, Forest no, like at Vandy's a de- like a uh, well, it's just, uh, it's the de- temperature check. It's the debut of Sam Hartman. It's a temperature check for Vandy. They won two games. Blood clots too. Hmm? It was blood clots. Okay. For Wake uh, Sam Hartman. So Sam Hartman now uh, back. So it's a temperature shut. check for both of them. It, it, it's is it what? The TV just went dark. And it scared me. Um, Duke okay. Northwestern. I think that's an inflated line. What is the line? It's like nine, ten. No, it's like twelve and a half. Twelve Very and a half. Small. I think Duke. Uh, I mean, maybe Temple's just truly like an awful, awful team. By the way, if you ten. if you wanted if you had ten dollars and you wanted to go to the cheapest game in the early window, you would be going to Northwestern. You would be going to Duke at Northwestern. You can get in for as low as six dollars. A whole six bucks. If you coffee. Want. No, I'm I'm kind of surprised. Look at the get in price for Alabama, Texas. It's probably a massive stadium. It's a massive stadium, but it's Alabama yeah, coming yeah. to town. It's it's start it's twelve dollars. I can get in there for twelve dollars. I'm telling you. These Austin, Texas, they'd Texas, rather watch it at the bar. They, yeah, Texas fans, they've got better shit to do. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. I hate when teams say that. Oh, we have better shit to do here. Yeah, if you were winning, your ass would fucking be A hundred percent. But that's, I mean, it, like, I love Austin the city. I would not want to go to college in Austin because I feel like college towns, you have nothing else to do. You want to go to the game. I also think that they're not going to say this out loud. They're not going to admit it. They think they're going to get their asses kicked. It's probably like an independent film festival there that weekend or something. Damn. <laughs> they're uh, having their wine and cheese inside somewhere. Okay, you got, got a couple. Uh, just uh, My radar's up on Ohio at Penn State. I don't think Ohio's terrible. And it's 24 and a half. Just my radar's up on that one. Let's, really? let's, let's move What's on. your yeah. radar on? I don't think they're going to win it, but I think they're going to keep that a little to closer. To kick off, on. this is a 2.30 game, but Marshall Notre Dame. Let me make sure we don't have any more of that noon slate. We don't. I think that's no. pretty much it. North Carolina, Georgia State's a good game. Yeah, and it's like that, seven, eight it's point spread. Such a crazy schedule. What's North Carolina doing? No, you know uh, what? It was? Not having a defense. They Can't told themselves that's a 2022 problem yeah. in yeah. 2012 when yes. they scheduled. All no, that's a 2022. That problem. That was one of those scheduling things. Is it recruiting? Are they just trying to recruit Atlanta? Yeah, Are they trying probably. to get seen in Atlanta? They just kicked the tin down the road or whatever the cliche quote is, and then now it's like, oh fuck, we really shouldn't have done that. Oh, there's another one. Uh, UTSA at Army. UTSA coming off a, a double overtime loss to Houston. UTSA, a good team. With a good quarterback, great athletes, had a good year last year. Now they're on the road at Army. Uh, with you know, Army's a pretty good team too. Army so. played Coastal Carolina close last weekend. I think it's two and a two and a half somewhere around there. Like I I, I love Army to uh, to win that game against UTSA. Shout out uh, Cons. Your phrase out, this Hans. week is uh, I was ask you what it is, is is pepperoni cheesecake. Pepperoni yeah, cheesecake. Oh man. You, my pregnant ass was like, that kind of sounds Sounds good. delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Throw some hot sauce on that bitch. So we move on to Jack's right, 230, Marshall at Notre Dame. You have your Western Michigan Ball State, your Lafayette Temple, your Southern Utah, Utah in the middle there as a bridge. But you have Marshall, mm, Marshall at Notre Dame. Notre Dame's not in a prove-it spot, but Notre Dame is in a spot like, I need to see you score some points. Yes. I need to see you – like, everybody's crediting Ohio State's defense. Everybody's going nuts. Oh, they look so much better this year. Maybe – maybe Notre Dame's offense sucks. It's a new qu- quarterback, new running back, new a lot of things. Maybe their offense sucks. I'm with you. They need to score 35 points here to make me feel like they're – they're And in convincing fashion. Yeah. like what, They need to hammer Marshall. What's interesting about that narrative of, oh, Ohio State's defense looks so much better, the further we get removed from that game, the more I remember it's like – 
when did we ever say Notre Dame's offense was so great? There wasn't a moment in that game. It was the most there, boring. It, it was so boring. That game it just was. existed. The only thing I remember is that kind of crazy catch the uh, Notre yeah. Dame guy had. But the, it's like going into that game, I don't think anybody was sitting there being like, you know, Ohio State's defense has a really hard offense to deal with. I don't think that was ever a storyline. The, the pendulum for that game, it only swung like this. It only moved like this. Because when, when Ohio State took the lead 14-10, to 10, there was never any danger of Notre Dame catching them. No, At 14-10, it was like weird. Um, and then it was 21-10. It felt like a 50-point lead. If I wasn't watching that game with an Ohio State fan and a Notre Dame fan, there would have been zero emotion attached to it for me. Like, did you, did that, like there was zero emotion coming from the screen. It was weird. That's what I'm saying. Like I like gambling wise, yes. Even but like, those two guys didn't feel like they were. They all didn't. That. It felt weird. Hey, I mean, no, nah, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Okay, oh. probably should have myself. No, um, it's not. That wasn't about Big Ever Chief. More about like I don't know. But there's like a weird. The Midwest nice doesn't come across well when it's like in college football. Sometimes it's like Midwest scared. Yeah, you guys are just like, oh, we'll just like lollygag through. Yeah. Like, oh, let's just have some fun. All right. Uh, I see what you mean. So we got Furman at Clemson. App State at A&M. Mm. What, what was that noise? I'm doing what every fan base does. and Stop, it's stop, stop. Listen to me. <laughs> listen to what I'm about to tell you, okay? Listen, Linda, listen. Look, look in my eyes. a and is about to beat the shit out of App State. App State's going to score like 14 points. They got to play North Carolina's defense, which Katie says, Gene says, it's awful. It they got awful. to enjoy that. They got to play against that. They're going to go down to College Station and play against a, a stone wall of a defense. They're going to score 14. You guys are going to score 34 to 40. You'll win 37 14, something like that. Rationally, I hear you. But you know how it feels. When the emotion starts to creep in, and you see, yes, I think A&M's defense is in a completely different league than North Carolina's defense, but I can't get over the way that North Carolina and App State looked. I can't get over the fact that Chase Bryce looked incredibly competent against Notre Dame, and then also A&M's offense just was not very good. Yes, they won 31-0. to zero. I know that by the end of this game, I will be like, why did I ever care about this? But also remember what happened last year, and I know Haynes King got hurt, but A&M did not look good against Colorado in week two Looked either. Like garbage, yeah. So I won that game ten to seven. It w- I don't even want to know. I I just completely I'm shut you, you it out. Oh, so so um, last they week the early window was good. The mm-hmm. late window I thought was really good. The the three thirty was garbage. There was just nothing really there. This I don't think we're gonna have that problem this week. App State at A&M, Tennessee at Pitts at three thirty on ABC. Mm-hmm. Another low key uh, can not even low key another candidate for game of the game of the day. This is a gigantic moment for Tennessee. Yes. I don't think this is big for Pittsburgh. It's a gigantic yeah. moment for Tennessee. If you matter in the SEC, if, you, if you're if you buying into hype, if you're going to be a good team this year, you got to go on the road and beat this team. Got to. And you I have to, especially nervous. after what happened last year. There's not year. a world you can lose this game and be special this year. Yeah, as, like, And it is the rematch of the – and what was the score, like 41 to 34 last year? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah. It was a, like a, a one-score game. And then also, just if Tennessee looks bad at all, all of the confidence that this fan base has going into this year starts to unravel. The thing to me that's interesting about – like I think Narduzzi said it either like yesterday, maybe it was today, I don't know, all my days run together, is he's talking about like how familiar they are with Hinden Hooker. I mean, Hinden Hooker came into that game last year as the backup because Joe Milton got hurt, but they're obviously very familiar with him before he came to Tennessee. Pitt, look, that game against West Virginia, and I know we overreact, but like that to me is one of the games of the year so far, and Tennessee just quietly – beat whoever they played by a billion well they beat ball state they didn't have to really sweat for it uh there is no rest advantage either they both played thursday night so they're both coming in uh with the same amount of rest same everything um i just think it matters so much more for tennessee like Pitt wins this game good if they lose this game they're fine um and and i i i don't know if that helps or hurts tennessee for for it to be such a feel feel like a it's not a must win but it kind of feels like for a Tennessee? must win. Yeah. I think it's a for confidence level for sure. It's a better win. Josh Heupel said that like he was like, "Oh, there's definitely a sense of urgency." I would agree with you that like is the sense of urgency every team wants to win definitely. If you had to actually gauge the realness of the sense of urgency inside Tennessee's locker room right now versus Pitt, I would say Tennessee's is probably higher. 
more so though just for the storyline of is Tennessee taking that next step if they lose to Pitt again yeah that's tough I mean Pitt took that step last year they won 11 games they were fantastic they had a first round pick at quarterback they had Heisman finds the quarterback that's everything Tennessee's trying to be this year so it's, it's now Tennessee's time to prove it and both teams are ranked this year and I don't think either one was ranked when they played last year also right? I think Tennessee's gonna walk in there and thump their fucking skull really damn yeah. Tennessee's favored by six. I don't and think half, Pitt's I think. very good. I think they got lucky against a middling West Virginia team. They got lucky. I and mean, people don't say it. Because you think as a Neil Brown Neil Brown being a pussy and the receiver not being able to catch. The two things that happened to turn that game, West Virginia uh Pitt did neither of them. Now, yeah. in fairness, they did go after the the punt. They did go ninety yards and score, so they had to do that. But if he goes for it there, they never get that chance. That had Slovis to happen. Slovis is pretty good, though. Slovis wasn't bad. Slovis wasn't bad. The over is my lock of the week. I'll tell you what. I think Hendon, mm-hmm. I think Hendon Hooker and these receivers are a hell of a lot better than JT Daniels What's than those number? receivers. I would 66 agree with that. and a half. And you won your first lock last week. Yes. We nice. All, One and all. Did. Let's Love go that. with uh, – let, let, let's go back to the slate as we uh, plow through this. Uh, everybody feel uh, – well, let's get some disagreement going. Anybody think Pitt's won in this game? No. I think no, because I really agree with you. They looked just so – West Virginia, if I was a oh, – fuck. If I was a West Virginia fan uh, and I thought about that game, I would be killing myself. West Virginia's in a spot. Like, I don't know how West Virginia gets excited for football right now. Uh, after losing that game that you were in control of, it's like if Florida State had lost the other night to LSU, I just wouldn't be able to get excited again on a Saturday Mm-mm. this year. No, definitely not. I The only thing I can say, and here's a little bit of a disagreement with with thinking that the West Virginia game doesn't matter, or that Pitt could, should have won that game easily. It was a rivalry game. I know these players haven't played in it because they haven't played in a decade, but as we've said a million times when we talk about rivalry games, those things are always, you know, heated no matter what even if the, both the teams suck if both the teams are great so like I don't look at West Virginia Pitt and all the emotion that was attached to it and be like because of that game I think Tennessee is going to roll them I do think that you have to take into consideration that it was Thursday night of week one in a heated rivalry that the entire country was watching so we move on in the uh after Tennessee Pittsburgh I now have a crown on I hope that was well edited right there we had to stop and pee you found it in the bathroom no uh, no Katie ordered it for me. The King of the South. Um, I am happy for you that you're the King of the South. I've me always, too. I've never not been the King of the South. <laughs> we can pretend that the fucking mascot that works here is the King of the South. That's just a lie. Um, Washington State at Wisconsin is is one that I, again, uh, it's it feels like a week one game. This is a gigantic eyeballs game for me. I think everybody should be just kind of keeping your side eye on what happens there. Wisconsin, the better program. Wisconsin at home. Wisconsin, huge favorites. I think Washington State might have something for them, though. Washington State, another team, did not play, did not show well in week one. Didn't show well at all. Uh, Wisconsin cruised 38 nothing last week. Just, just, let's just see what happens. Wisconsin, I just don't think is as strong as they were last year with their defense. And their, Braylon Allen's fantastic. But let's just. Barstool uh, athlete. Huh? Barstool athlete, Braylon Allen. Oh, excuse me. Just let's focus on that. Let's see what happens. I do feel like in Wisconsin, they're 19th in the country right now. And obviously at Barstool, we talk a lot about them because of Dan. But Washington State, I feel no one is talking about. And maybe for good reason. But when you, like, just looking at it on the paper, you're like, oh, well, Washington State's going to lose to Wisconsin. They're 19th in the country, blah, blah, blah. Like, you might be 100% right about Wisconsin. No, I, I am. Oh, you are? King of the South. Wisconsin's not in the South. I'm the king of all the land I survey. <laughs> I've been if I've been to your place, I'm the king of your place. I've been to Wisconsin. I don't think that's how that works. You're not the king of it's my place. It's just apartment. weird how Madison just sits between these two big giant lakes. Just beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, know. every time I say that, I'm being weird. You are being weird. About how much I love Madison? I said Madison's beautiful. I didn't say I loved it that much. You loved it when you were there. It was fine. The cheese curds? I love Bloomington too. You've liked every Big Ten. I haven't. That, we haven't been anywhere I haven't liked. Turns out, if you got a college football team in your town and you got a college town, pretty good place. You know what? I thank you for saying that because. Oh, I have Starkville. People, when I took you to Starkville, did you have a good time? Yeah, I've of always had did. a good time in Starkville. I don't like when, when and I, Dave gives me a lot of shit about it too. He's like, is there a place that you don't like? It's like if I go to a college town and they have good food, good drinks, and a fun atmosphere i don't care if i hate the team or not i enjoyed it yeah 
Yeah, I am. we'll find out about Iowa City this uh, this well, week. Well, you that's different. I will definitely enjoy it. You might not. We're not gonna be there long. Um, right, just enough time for you to get killed. Keep quit saying that. You're you're putting the energy in the world too much. Uh, oh, I'm the one. See that's my mom's text. Yeah. Oh, I I love your mom. God, she's so funny. Don't get stabbed. Houston at Texas Tech is another one. That's another mm-hmm. eyeball game. Texas Tech with Joey McGuire. Now, their quarterback got hurt last week. But they had a quarterback battle deep into camp, so I don't think they're going to be all that hurt Still by having returning. their Donovan Smith will now start. So it's Like, he had reps last year. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, no. They had a battle deep into camp with him and show. So, um, I, I think they're fine. Texas Tech is, is one. Houston, if they get through UTSA and Texas Tech, look out. They could be on undefeated watch. Mm-hmm. Um, Iowa State, Iowa is where we're going to be. <clears throat> Iowa was embarrassed. Iowa State can't beat Iowa. Something's got to give. You know what I think it is? What? I think Iowa State can beat Iowa. I think that's, think the, one, that's the one that's going to give. Yeah. They got Hunter Deckers. Uh, they think they like him at quarterback just as much as they like Brock, Brock Purdy. They don't have the stud running back they've had for the last and five Xavier or six Hutchinson. years. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I – I, I'm kind of in a – believe it when I see it with Iowa State. Like, you've had better teams in Iowa for the last three or four years, and you haven't been able to beat them now, although they weren't better than them last year. But three out of the last four years have had better teams that couldn't beat them. Now they uh, – now we'll see. We will. But Iowa, again, embarrass themselves. Are, are you going to lay down and be embarrassing, or are you going to get up and hit your rival in the it's, fucking mouth? And this is also, too, I mean, you know, a lot of these games we've talked about, like one team played a worthy opponent and the other team didn't. Or we don't – we didn't necessarily know. This game, they both played shit teams. I yeah. mean, you know, what well, South, South Dakota State's a thing. strong, a strong FCS team. Yes, and I mean, and that game obviously was just a disgusting display of football. But, but what I'm saying is, like, we don't really know. It wasn't like Iowa State played a ranked team and Iowa didn't. Like, they both had quote cupcake games, and they weren't. But I, I just we said this last podcast, and I hope that Iowa fans are not content with it but when you when you score seven points the way that you did and every year it's just like well i was just boring but they get it done like somebody do something somebody like, do something yeah somebody do something hey kirk maybe fire brian kill nepotism uh katie i'm gonna need to see the tickets you you're you're too you're too zoomed in i guess yeah oh yes uh see in that middle window who's who's my most expensive ticket is it it oh it's Iowa State, Iowa, $91. It's more expensive to go to that game than go to Alabama, Texas. $91. And who's my cheapest game in this window? That's $6 for Portland State, Washington. Portland State, Washington. I can get in for $6. Okay. All right. So my most expensive ticket so far on Saturday is $91 to go see Iowa and Iowa State. Get to wave at kids. I, you do. Bless them. I'll we also wish. have kids. $3. We also, I wish we had most expensive on the other side. Because that would be oh. an interesting little thing to look at as well. Because yeah. you could, like, the top tier tickets out of Alabama, Texas, yeah. may could be, be the most yeah. expensive. Yeah, but we don't know. But the get in price the, is the. the So we talk about rivalries and uh, Iowa State, Iowa being in the same state. Where do you put them as far as, like, they hate each other? Oh, it's very high. Very high, right? Very high. Yeah, they hate each other. And top 10, top 15. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they hate, hate each other. Each other. Uh, and, um, I mean, I just. just I have so many Iowa State fans in my DMs just just praising me and doing this. Brandon, wear this, do this. Do, you know, yeah, they hate each other. Uh, so one of the things that my I my wife oh. loves my wife. You know, for Mother's my Day, <coughs> for Mother's Day, I get her a purse, all kind of things. She loves buying me wallets. Well, you know why? It's her favorite thing to buy me. You know why? Because a man with a ratchet wallet. It says a lot about you. You can't be having that. But she's not going to do it anymore because we got the best wallet right here. It is Ridge Wallet, an ultra slim minimalist wallet. It holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. Can I tell you, you know, when you carry a wallet around in your back pocket? Yeah. If you cuz a lot of times you can't carry purses in the places now. You don't want a bulky wallet. Oh, right? no, you don't want to no. sit on a you bulky your, ass you want wallet. Your, you want your cards and a little bit of cash mm-hmm. and that's it. Maybe your subway card. Whatever you need to carry. And I mean the sandwich place. Or just, you know, the public transportation. But either way, over 30 colors, though. That's important. 30 it's colors and styles. Uh, they got carbon fiber, burnt titanium. That sounds fancy. And even more importantly, they have technology that blocks the hackers from getting, you know, people can't just scan, can't scan your butt and get the information. They do sc- that? Don't the, scan that butt. 
Those don't, hackers don't are crazy. It secures anywhere from two to six keys. They have a, a new key case to help organize your keys. It organizes the keys in compact silhouette, fold out for easy access. Six colors and styles for the key case include carbon fiber and again burnt titanium, which is sounds delicious. De delicious. Burnt anything's good. Burnt French fries. <laughs> You're burnt, not gonna eat the wallet or burnt the key case. But the best popcorn is when you get it almost burnt. Oh, see, I disagree. But you know what is good though? Burnt titanium. That's go, what you need. Go to Ridge.com. Use the code UR. Can we? We have so many different codes. Go to Ridge.com and use the code UR for 10% off your you order. Are. The letters. You are. You and R. You are going to buy a great wallet. And with, with every dollar spent on the website before September 30th, which is about what? The 23 days away? This you'll be entered to win a brand new upgraded Ford Bronco. Oh, wow. oh. That's pretty good. Or 75K if you prefer cash. I'd rather have the Bronco. Uh, so you either get a Ford Bronco or $75,000 in cash. Girls that are listening, guys that are listening, a wallet is a great gift, and you get 10% off your order using the code UR Take at Ridge.com. Uh, we move on to the night slate. No shots at Holy Cross Buffalo or Old Dominion East Carolina or Robert Morris, Miami of Ohio, but we're going to move past you for now. Maybe come back to you. Um, <clears throat> Kentucky, Florida, we've already broke down. We've already talked about that one. Uh, Kent State, Oklahoma. you got Western Carolina, Georgia Tech. Central Arkansas, Ole Miss, as we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Come on. Uh, what? You, what? Syracuse at UConn. My my mistake. I apologize. <laughs> Syracuse at UConn. No, I'm excited for this game. Sean uh, Tucker going to put it on No, we have a you? stout run defense, so we're going to have to see. But, yeah, uh, I just hope UConn continues their undefeated ATS season. Sean Tucker. We have, uh, deep into the night, we have USC Stanford at 7.30. Not a great night sleep, by the way. Why is this late? Why is the spread so small? Because we don't. Because because we because USC we don't know if their defense is any good. We don't know if their offensive line is any good. Uh, we know their skill positions are good. We know they can score a lot of points. But Stanford's also Stanford's a Power Five team too. They're at home. They beat Oregon at home last year. Stan, Stan, Stanford. You okay, got to see with Stanford. Stanford also has doesn't matter. Stanford also has a a five star uh, quarterback, five star quarterback Tanner McKee going into his second year. No pieces around him to help though. It's it, we're basing when we talk about USC, and I definitely fall into this trap. It's you're you're basing it off of Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, all the hype, and then you're basing Stanford on the fact that they just haven't been very good. But at the end of the day, I mean. USC and Stanford are pretty even playing. Stanford's field. also given USC fits through the years. So um, and it, there, it's a conference biggest game. Biggest upset ever. Yeah. So I, I, I think USC is about to go win this game. I think. But if we too. sat here on Saturday night talking about Stanford beating USC, I wouldn't be overly shocked. There are other games on the be, board I'd be more shocked about. I wouldn't be like shocked, like oh my god, I can't believe it. But it would surprise me just because I do put a lot more into – Stanford is built the way you're going to need to be built to beat a Lincoln-Riley team. They're going to be able to run. They're yeah. going to be physical up front. They're going to be uh, sound. They're going to they're gonna be able to play a game that can beat USC. Now, I don't know if they can beat USC, but they're going to play the style required to beat this team. Yeah. Uh, I, I just – I don't see it happening. I also just think – and, I mean, I you know the, you, we talked about it earlier this week with the Pac-12 being dead – for the college football playoff, which is just asinine. I still can't believe it was happening again. People are, are paid to overreact, though. If USC loses to Stanford, I start to buy into that a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Buy into what? The narrative that, like, Greg McElroy was pushing about the Pac-12 being dead for the college football playoff. Oh, the, well, won. then I think Utah becomes their only hope. And that, yeah, and then and then you start to be like, oh, okay, they did lose to Florida. So, you know, I, I would turn my opinion real quick if that happened. I don't think it's going to happen. I think USC is going to be just fine and cover the spread. Hawaii and Michigan's not interesting because Michigan's going to win by 90. But it is interesting in the fact that they had Cade McNamara start week one. Now they're going to have J.J. McCarthy start mm -hmm. week two. You can't split the baby. It is a 51-point spread. Who starts week three? <sighs> J.J. Does he – does he impress so much that he starts week three, J.J. McCarthy? That's what you got to see out of this game. No, I don't think so. I think that – I think he might. Until they play in the well, Big week Ten. Week three is UConn, so they And then they play Maryland, it. I think, week four. I think that, that Jim Harbaugh is – going for whatever reason that he's actually doing this and whether it's – you know, he doesn't want somebody to enter the transfer portal or if he really doesn't want to split the baby in half, whatever it may be, I could easily see him going back and forth, back and forth until he absolutely has to make a decision against a worthy opponent. 
All right, now this was kind of – well, one more before I get to the game we should have been talking about earlier because it's a huge game, gigantic game. Yes. Uh, Boston College at Virginia Tech I think is a tremendous bounce-back st- uh, place for Boston College. Virginia Tech's a bad team. Boston College had a bad game. I think that's two different things. I like Boston College bounce-back Virginia Tech. Now, fucking number nine against number 21, Baylor at BYU. 10-15. At 10-15, a gigantic game out west uh, as BYU looks to kind of stamp this season as, as – them mattering they got four chances to do this they play four teams i think are overrated baylor <clears throat> who i think is overrated at nine sorry notre dame arkansas oregon they play all four of those teams and starts at home against baylor and i believe byu is about to beat the piss out of baylor i don't want anybody to agree with that because i want I, I i think that might be a wild take but my yeah the 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 line. I love BYU this year. I've, I've been loving them for a couple of you weeks. You have the line being only a field goal right now is suspect to me because yeah, I. But they're favored over the number nine team in the country. Yeah, I, but I I feel like and I I have Baylor up. I think I don't know where I put exactly where I put Baylor because I do think that because they won the Big Twelve and everything that they have returning, they they should be ranked higher than BYU. I just don't buy Baylor. However, I feel like you're too high on BYU too. Good. Like Good. I do, and and I by there is not an outcome with this game unless one of those teams wins by like seventy points that I would be surprised about. If Baylor comes in and beats them by a couple touchdowns, well, they're ranked higher. If BYU does, well, Baylor's overrated. That to me, there's if Baylor beats BYU. I'm going to be really surprised. Really. I don't have Baylor in my top twenty-five. I barely have them in like my top forty. Um, I don't think they're a very good football team. Uh, they're fine. Like, they're a good Big 12, like, decent. But I don't – number nine, they're the most overranked team in the country right now. And I think BYU's really proper in their 15 to 20 ranking. They can continue this to move up. But I think at BYU, Saturday night, in in Provo, tickets as low as 60 bucks. It's going to be a raucous environment. And Baylor's, I think, just going to get run through. Out of curiosity, and this is, I mean, an honest question, what makes them not in your top 40 after what they did last year? Lost a lot of their defense. They did, but they they returned a quarterback that they, like with Blake Shapen, that they think is way better. They think, yeah. But, but I, like, they, they lost enough to go from winning the Big 12 to not a top 40 team? Yeah, in my book, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious. Like, well, you know, th- you realize they came – they came from like being one of the worst teams in the country to being the the Big Twelve Conference champion. So a wild swing is not also, crazy. They shouldn't I'm, I'm have won the Big Twelve. What the swing the swing they is? They shouldn't have won the Big Twelve. Do I have them? Katie just showed me. I have them at ten. I think that is. You're right. I think it's overranked. I just have them there because I I like what they're doing. I just don't know how they go from winning their conference to being. In week two, not even a top forty team, but that's I think just, you're going to see. I it. think that's a little extreme, but I, I, I see where he's coming from. I think you're going to see it on Saturday night. Like BYU is one of my favorite plays of the weekend, and um, obviously I could be wrong. I'm just very low on Baylor, like not very low, but like relatively speaking, the drop from nine to forty is a pretty big jump or a pretty big drop, and I think it's that big. And to be completely honest, it would not upset me whatsoever. But yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a right. fair no. This that, is that a good is. discussion because I think what you just said there is definitely like why do I think it? Brandon brought it up. The defense and the offense, uh, the de- defense lost a lot. BYU is the better football team for sure, and I think they're a lot better than three points. I also think that with, with a wild swing, you have to have a coach that's not as good as Dave. We think, and Dave Aranda has proven so far that he is. Um, I will be interested. I'm more curious to see, like, if this, the fact that BYU is favored, it's only three, it's at home and it's late, that's fine. I think that if BYU is a top six team in the country, like you have, Brandon, then they're going to have to absolutely destroy Baylor. Uh, I think I if they win by so. 10 or 14, yeah. that's a bit, that's a big one. You're beating a top 10 team at the end of the day. Which but if I they're think overrated at top, t- if they, that no, to me no, is. No, no, you just got to win. Whoever wins, wins. To me, that's Jack saying the top 40 stuff. Now, I, I think BYU's a better football team. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to beat them 10 to 17 points. But I don't think if they won by seven, it would say that BYU's not very good. Oh, I don't think so either. But I think there's a difference in saying BYU's not very good versus being the one of the first two out of the college football playoff. Because if Baylor's overrated and Baylor's not very good and BYU barely beats them, that doesn't give me confidence that they're going to be in the college football playoff conversation. A lot of, lot of, lot of water to put on the bridge before we talk about all that again though so i mean it's early yeah no i know but yeah. you, but you put baylor and i mean byu in the top six in preseason so that's what i'm going off of 
Yeah, but if they beat Baylor, then th- th- that's right on. I don't think it matters how much they beat them by. Unless Baylor just stinks. We'll see about Baylor. But I'm just saying, all I, all I got to do is get this win. Fair. Um, and then Mr. State's going to beat Arizona. Um, all right. You're we, not worried about that at all? Of course I'm fucking worried. How? Okay, where's your confidence meter? 70%. 70% that it's going to be fine? That we're going to win, yeah. Okay. What's the confidence meter that it's going to be like a grind-out type of game, that you're going to be sweating at about I think we will know. I think we will know within 10 minutes of this game starting how my night's going to end. <laughs> That's – No, I, I really do. I, I really? Think we either jump on them quick or we're in for a fucking wild night. If we're up – What's the spread right now? If we're up uh, 10, 10, 10, 10 and a half. If we're up 14 nothing, you know, five minutes in – we're cruising. If we're down, if we're down ten three or ten nothing, I'm. It's it just. What if it's buckle tied? The fuck up. What if it's zero zero? The buckle up, buckle up. So it's going to be like a two thirty a.m. I think you'll know immediately. Yeah, we'll be recording. We'll be recording the whole time. This is this will be week two of Mississippi State playing late. Yeah. And then next week A and M and Miami will be playing late. So this will be. Casey, pull up the uh, unnecessary reference Twitter, please. Katie. There you go. Katie. Her name is Katie. What I say. Casey. Same thing. So, we asked you, Roughnecks, we're about to record our Week 2 preview. Give us your wildest prediction for Week 2 that it could actually come true. The best we read on the show. Yes. How about Casey reads it for your boys? Yes, I please. I will read them. Before I start to read them, how many people do you think actually paid attention to that little part of that sentence that could actually come true? I hope. I hope they do. Usually they do not, but uh, we'll see. Katie, I'm going to need some tea. Yeah. Can you also write number seven? You forgot number seven on your list. <laughs> I thought it got late <laughs> early. I thought I got laid early on this thing. Okay, right. Casey. Okay, I will be reading them. So, Sean Dever, Michigan will end Hawaii's program. Oh, well, I don't think they're going to end it. But I don't think they're going to end it, but it's also. G- it's got to be the biggest point spread this week, I think. 51, yes. you said? Yeah. yeah, I would have to say it's so. It's going to be like. Pretend- yeah. It's not if Michigan can cl- can cover, it's if they choose to. Uh, Chase- That's a big number to cover, man. It's huge. All right, continue. Said. Chase Edwards, Texas covers, but not because they're good, but Alabama shows flaws like they did last year versus Florida. That's not a crazy take. That's, and we he, thought he they were going to kill Florida. Up. We thought they were going to beat Florida to death, and they won by two. Yeah. Um, it, if they if they show flaws, then you might be correct. However, I I, I think – Alex Prunier says, Texas a and will struggle against App State and pull away to win by one score in the fourth quarter. Well, that's not pulling away at all. That looks like an App State fan. Semi pro knowers. Uh, uh, let's go. What happened to time stands for segments on the podcast? First of all, listen to the full podcast. Second of all, um, there are timestamps in it, so I don't know what you're talking Haven't about. Haven't seen them on the description. Probably because you listen on SoundCloud. Continue, continue. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. Brian Prop says Anthony Richardson becomes Joe Milton 2.0. Oh. All the physical attributes you could ever want in a quarterback. Bal- balled out against an overrated opponent in his first start, gaining Heisman hype, but struggles in a week two rivalry game and spirals from there. I don't remember who it was Joe Milton beat, but it, it, I don't think it was top seven Utah. Like this guy, Anthony Richardson. No, no, Anthony Richardson. No, Joe, not Joe Milton. Milton. No, Joe, and Joe Milton beat Minnesota on the first that's night. That's right. Of the a, a terrible defense. Season. A terrible defense. And he just yes. ran all over. And, I, and everybody. Beat also, Minnesota. I don't no. really like this thing where people are pretending like Anthony Richardson didn't play last year. He was on the field for a lot of games a and lot. showed and showed, and showed flashes, a lot of yeah. things. And there we didn't know about Joe Milton until he. Showed up in that season because it was, it was after uh, the Will Spaten or and uh, Shea Patterson there. There was also like the multiple times last year we're in the middle Wilton of game. Spate. What did I say, Will Spaten? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew we knew what you meant. Wilton Spate, my the, bad. There was multiple times last year that people people that don't even root for Florida were like, "Where the fuck is Anthony Richardson? Why haven't they put him in yet?" So like we, I mean, Anthony Richardson is not a surprise. Jacob Palmer, Michigan versus BYU in the first round of the College Football Playoff. Sounds like Desmond. Just see what happened Desmond. on Pick Central. No, no. You know I've been the, uh, I've been the BYU guy. I got him six. Fucking Mets heard that pick and said, "Oh, I like that pick," and he put him in his playoff. Yeah. So now if, if BYU makes a playoff, it's gonna be look like it was his pick. And he Jacob, took it from me. And you, Jacob Palmer probably took it from you too. Michigan versus BYU in the first round of college football playoff. Uh huh. Let's dream big, baby. Dream, dream big. big. Hot dog shotgun says Vanderbilt shocks the world. Starts the season three and zero. Oh. I'm not ruling that out I don't either. Think that's shocking the world either. Oh, that would shock the world. They beat Wake Forest with Sam Hartman back. That would shock the yeah, world. Yeah, I guess. Their over and under was two and a half. They would. They would. Oh, hit, I guess they would. Shock they would the hit world. it yeah. by. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wait. Tater Thumper. Alabama will not make the playoff this year. Read it and weep. 
I don't know why I was weeping. I would, would love we that. Who, I would fucking weeping? love that. It's, weeping, not, yeah. it's not going to happen. This podcast. Adam Bell, Hinden Hooker is swallowed up by the Pitt defensive line, and Tennessee leaves Pitt with their heads held low while Pitt powers into the top ten. Oh, a hooker swallowing. Mm. Wow, you you had to do that, didn't I you? I did. Uh, Golden Lion Tarmian. Tamarin? Tamarin, I can't read. Notre Dame loses to Marshall. They won't be able to score, and it will dash their playoff hopes. It's a wild take. Could it happen? Maybe. Cottonwood Joey. K-State shows why Missouri doesn't belong in the SEC. And Bayou Billy Butler responded immediately, this isn't wild at all. We no, did ask not. for things that could it's, actually happen. It's not. It's not. Uh, Bears and Taco. Wisconsin's Graham Mertz throws for five touchdowns against Washington State. All right. That'd be wild. Nick Presley. It makes no sense, but somehow, some way, Stanford ups US, upsets USC. It does make sense. It doesn't, but it does. Uh, listen. Can I? When, whenever you say something wild, can I picture myself on Saturday looking back at it and talking about it? I can. I can picture Stanford beating USC. I don't think it's going to happen, but, but I. It's I don't not think it's wild. out of the question. Oh well, um, yeah, of course not. Does the Queen have any connections to any college football teams? That'd be a great play. Like, um, we're what betting did, this team. Is there any team that's the Monarchs or anything? Yeah, Old, Old Dominion. Dominion. They don't Old Dominion. What did Dan do for his game of the year that had to do with the Queen? It's, no, he just he, oh he nothing. wanted he wanted to like dedicate his game was already oh. his 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 game of the year was already a pick and then he just he just then now he renamed the it the In Memoriam Queen. Gotcha. Pick of but the for game no of the reason, year. just because he right. did it. There no. was no. But R.I.P. No. to the Queen. I, you know what? It, I can tell you what it is. What? It's um, BYU Baylor over. And that's, said it's that's already all of a sudden on the Queen on game. Pickums. That's a Queen game. Okay, that's the Queen game. All right. Um, Try Star Sharp. Florida comes down to earth and looks rough against Kentucky. Might still win, but doesn't look like the number twelve team in the country. I think that's very fair. We talked about that earlier. Uh, here we go. Vandy M. Vandrell. Quinn Ewers will throw for 350 yards and three scores. B. John Robinson has 150 yards of offense, and Texas loses by 30 against Alabama. <laughs> Could happen. I love the response with the Matthew. McConaughey I mean, I, could they Wall lose? Street. I, I don't yeah. think those things could happen, and I don't think all that could happen. No, if Quinn Ewers has 350 yards and three touchdowns, and they yeah. still lose by 30. Yeah, points. no. What he gave me is a scenario where they have 500 yards of offense. They're not losing just by between, 30. Just between the two guys, yeah. Two guys. They're not gonna have. They're not lose by 30 if they have 500 yards of offense. I mean, how many? Like what? Alabama score over 100 points? No, they could. I mean, you could see a world where 200 to 250 of them were in garbage time. So if you, but you're if that's 500 yards, Jack. That's a lot of Quinn yards. Ewers you're right. You're right. Take up a lot of time. If Quinn fact. Ewers scores three touchdowns and Bijan Robinson has 150 yards and only scores, let's say one touchdown with that, so you're looking at 28 points. That's 63-28. Like that's crazy. All right, go down. It could be. It could happen, I guess. Although now that I'm thinking about it, wasn't there a, a, a night when – I don't remember what the final score was, but Alabama and Ole Miss, Ole Miss scored with them for a while. It was a night where Alabama had like 712 yards out of a possible 720. Might have beat them by 30 and given up 40 points. I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. It was, it was 63-40. Yeah. I think it, it was 63-40 was the it final score. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it could yeah, it was 40, No, it was 63-42. It was 42-42, and they beat and them by 21. Yeah. Yes. But 30 points. Yeah. I mean, that's – and, again, that's just assuming <laughs> – No, 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 hold on. Just that was Jordan Tamu. Right. Eric Eckstein says Haynes King throws a back-breaking interception against App State with a score tied at 27 with two minutes to go. App State kicks go-ahead field goal to win 30-27. to They said things that could actually come true from William Von Brunt. I don't Proper like, Chelsea just a fan. I don't like that William Von Brunt came through with that. Like, no, I, I don't think that's going to happen, but it could – all right, continue. He's Let's go down. Some interceptions. Go down. None of these are good enough. Um. Uh, oh, this one's crazy. Cameron Kowaleski says BYU will beat Baylor by double digits, and Texas will be within a TD of Texas. <laughs> so that's interesting. <laughs> Richie Hurts, LSU loses to Southern at home. Funny as that would be, no. Well, Buckeye Nation, JJ McCarthy doesn't produce as well. What Michigan fans think he is going to do? I, that's just a hard sentence to read. Well, and it's in from a, someone who went to Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, I mean that's just not correct. And Harbaugh sets McNamara as the starter for the season. I was kidding, Ohio State fans. At least you're not 70 IQ Spartan tribe. 
Beat Kent State says uh, South Carolina upsets in Arkansas who will overlook South Carolina after seeing all the slander SC is getting. I guarantee you Arkansas doesn't care about the slander. That's a South Carolina fan being a little bitch. Oh, we're getting slander. We're getting slander. Shut up. You weren't very good. Is that in o- Oklahoma? Whatever. He's stupid too. Boomer sooner. It's just a cock. Well, Oklahoma fans love South Carolina because of Beamer. Because Oklahoma fans are that's very – true. They, they claim Beamer even though – yeah, that that's very true. It's funny how the tentacles of some fan bases get out to yeah. other places. Ooh, so, like um, Ohio State with Joe Burrow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, I love JT Jakubik's. Uh, Iowa will score twenty-one points. That oh, is wild. That's a, being the wild take. <laughs> yeah, it's a wild take. No, no, no. Has, has nothing to do with Iowa State, <laughs> like winning yeah. the game or Iowa just, winning. They'll just score they'll three score. touchdowns. They'll that's just, crazy. They'll just three get into the end zone. Touchdowns. All right, let's, get into uh, the end zone. Let's 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 go ahead and wrap her up. That that's that's good. This, oh, Maxwell, it's football season, Garner. The Blake Shapin game or not, I really don't know. Wild take. All right. So, week two is upon us. i got to go drink some tea so that I can do the Brandon Walker show. Uh, Katie has to, make it. unfortunately, make the tea. That's where we are in our relationship. You don't know um, how to make tea? I don't know how to make it like she does. Okay. All right. got to go. That's we'll see unne- you on Saturday in Iowa City. That's Unnecessary Roughness.